Here we go. Let's get crazy. Oh, Emma. Today I'm talking to Shanae Alexander. Shanae is an entrepreneur, lifestyle blogger, and speaker. She was the marketing director for eight years for a luxury furniture design company. And she started cultivating her Instagram while applying for a job at Class Class. Did not get the job. And then two weeks later, her boss said, you're an entrepreneur. What are you doing? I'm Correct me if I got any of that wrong. Um, how you, how's it going? <laughs> I'm just going to like have you do my intros from now on because that was like actually way more concise and better than I, usually that's an hour of the podcast right there. It's just explaining what you just did in 15 seconds. Well, I aggravate, I not aggregate, aggravate, I aggregate. <laughs> <laughs> I aggravated it and I aggregated it. I aggravated it. the whole thing. <laughs> um, it was interesting. I was going to, I wanted to ask what, what do you think happened in those two weeks when you applied for the job? And then, cause did your boss know you were applying for the job? Like, what do you, do you think no. he was picking up on something? No, I honestly think that, and I'm not going to get all like woo woo about like how things happen in the world. But so mm. I was at a job for eight years, which was unheard of in New York at the time. Like no one stays at a job for eight years. I loved my job also. And in marketing. That's like people bop around. Oh, totally. And I was just like, I'm happy and I get to live my life and I make an okay amount of money. But um, I was actually just doing an interview at class class because I wanted to try to learn how to interview because I hadn't done it in eight years. Mm. And my friend Abby was just like, you should do this. You should just try out. And I was like, try out. Like it's like the cheerleading squad or something. (laughs) It's a fucking job. But I was like, okay. And then two weeks later, um, my boss ended up kindly firing me, which was the best thing ever. Cause he was sure. like, you're supposed to be an entrepreneur. You're not supposed to work at a company. He was like, I'm going to pay you for two months, go start a company. Wow. Which is like truly like, it was the worst, best moment of my life. It was like you, one of those things where you're like, someone gave me a really good opportunity, but sure. also it was scary. Were you surprised? Like, did you, at the time were you like, oh, he's just trying to fire me nicely. Or what, like, how did you feel when he did that? <laughs> I went through a range of emotions, like deep (laughs) depression, fear. It's like a breakup. Oh, no, it felt like when we- It really is. And he started crying. And we didn't even get, like, we didn't even get to the appetizer. (laughs) Both crying on Park Avenue in a sushi place. It was awful. And then I literally (laughs) walked around, you know, like public crying in New York is just like the best. Let me think if I've done that. I don't, I've definitely public cried- I don't know if I've done it in, I don't know if I've had the experience of doing it in New York though. Well, now you have LA, so you have car, car crying, huge. Who doesn't love a car cry? But um, I particularly love a New York City street cry. Mm. Um, So I did one of those and then I went and sat at a diner and cried there. Also a great place to cry. Um, One time I actually met a girl on the subway and she was crying and I just rode to Coney Island with her and just like helped her. Yeah, she was like going through a breakup. You just kind of, your senses like picked it up and you, was she crying like, <laughs> or was yes. it? Mm. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't like she saw something like sentimental, like an animal video. It right. was, it was like, deep. it was, there was problem. Right. So I was right. like, are you okay? She was like, my boyfriend just broke up with me. I was like, do you want to talk about it? Which I thought meant like two subway stops. Right. But it was like all the way to Coney Island. That's like one of those things where you're like, how you doing? And someone's like, actually not well. And then you have to make that like game time decision. Like, oh yeah okay, do I say sorry to hear that? Or do I go, oh, what's going on? And then like hedge my bets that they're not going to be like, well, in kindergarten, I didn't blah, 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 blah. And you're like, fuck. Truly though, right now, asking the simple fucking question, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. You're setting yourself up for Ooh, just an yep. absolute <laughs> roller coaster. I mean, I, I, I like, yeah. actually when I'm hosting my podcast, I am worried to ask people that question because I'm like, this could go really a lot of ways. I had a Zoom meeting the other day and I've never had any general meetings ever that I feel like even to sometimes with like people, like executives, like that they just want someone to talk to, which has never been, <laughs> I've never got that vibe. Normally it's like kind of like the same like business like thing, of, you know, but this time I'm like, oh, I don't actually know how long these last now because I think that they're like looking to connect. They're just kinda. like lonely. <laughs> They're like talking about their horse. I was like, where is, what is going on right now? But now, are you like into that? Or are you like anti-Zoom? I don't mind at all. You know, part yeah. of me, if I'm being totally honest, I really like certain parts of it. And it was interesting. I was watching the, your financial, your, with your accountant, those videos. Oh, yeah. And I've been thinking a lot about that in this, before quarantine, probably in the past like two years, I've been really trying to be better about that. But in quarantine, it's made me realize a lot of things with budgeting, big one. 
Ubers. So in the past, oh I was gosh. always, it's like Uber to a meeting, Uber to a meeting, Uber to a meeting. I used to always Uber to audition so I could study in the car. Okay, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. And, you know, your guy said he was like, when it's not, when it's with a credit card, and also that extends to digital transactions, up, 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 it's free, totally. you know? So with the Zoom now, what I think of is I'm like, I'm not commuting. And that's kind of nice. Also, it's like, we don't need to be in person per se. So I don't mind. No. I'm, and how, I kinda, how are you feeling about them? Um, I like it better that it's like more personal than a phone call. Mm -hmm. Although I do love getting shit done on the phone, which is like pop the headphones on and like you're at a work meeting, but like right. you're also like washing the dishes. Yes. Love that. Um, no, but about the like whole budgeting thing, I didn't actually take money seriously until I'm about to turn 35 next week. And I started taking money like seriously probably when I was like 30 because they don't teach us this shit. They don't. Like, I, I didn't, I was even probably like 32, but it, they don't, yeah. I think they don't teach us because, but it behooves the, it behooves people that know about it to not teach other people because then it's easier to make money off of them. Right. Whereas people know about ownership and all that, then it's easier to like keep profiting. Are theory. you good at, are you, are you good at budgeting now? Especially like now that you have a partner that you have to like do that with. And she's really good. Oh, we I'm sure she's really a Virgo. Good. Yeah. And we come from really different backgrounds with that. Like she mm. lost her house in Hurricane Katrina. Her parents oh, God. didn't like, you know, she, so, and I was, it, I was real cushed up with that stuff. Like with my parents kind of babied me big time and I didn't did you go to like or were you like Montessori school kid yes, like, I did. like private school yeah how'd you know that because you have a Montessori vibe are you so from the stuff I was reading a new empathy was a real theme and being an empath and I'm very curious about that but not to be too weird but do you think maybe you're psychic Actually, I just had a psychic in my podcast and she said that she thinks that I have. So I've been told by two different energy readers at totally two different times. And I'm a skeptic when it comes to this shit. Like I'm from Texas. We don't do this. Like, <laughs> Where in Texas are you from? I couldn't find it anywhere. Just kept saying town okay. on the Mexican border. Literally, I've moved. I moved every three years of my whole life. So oh. that's probably why. And also, I don't think like, I mean, yeah, the internet wasn't around as much then. But McAllen, Texas. Texas is like where I went to high school and then I went okay. to the Christian school in yes. Fort Worth. Yes. And yeah. So, but in Texas, like psychic shit and like horoscopes are like not a thing. So totally. when I moved to New York it's and I met thing. a bunch of people from LA, I mean, right. if it, LA, if you don't say your sign within the first five minutes, like you're alienated. Absolutely. Shun, um, shun, especially like, in like a, in, in the social media type circles or anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get out of I here. I mean, also like, I feel like in LA, like people don't have other things to say, so they just say that. Ooh, I never um, thought ooh, about hot that. Hot take. Hot I never take. thought about um, that actually. I actually love LA. I'm not gonna. Shit I do LA. too, but you have to take it with a grain of salt, and it is ridiculous. Yes. And it, that I never thought about that. That that is very valid. So in Texas, they weren't. No. It was never discussed. But you no. saw you started seeing energy readers, and they were picking yeah, up. Yeah. So I've been haunted many times. Mm. Um, in my life, I've had a lot of paranormal experiences really? and I'm a skeptical person. So I'm not the type that's looking for that sort of stuff. Right. And then I had a few energy readers, uh, tell me that I'm the oldest person that they've ever met. Interesting. Um, so one energy reader told me that I am like thousands of years old. Hmm. And so the psychic that I had on my podcast the other day, she was like, you probably get haunted a lot and like feel a lot of paranormal activity because you're so old that you carry a lot of spirits with you. Hmm. And I was like, I don't know if I like that. Like, do you want a <laughs> lot of spirits with you? Like, I feel like it could be good in the sense I'm like, I've got like a little posse. It's a lot. Also, it's a lot. To t what? It's a not something you asked for. And it's no. like kind of hard to wrap your mind around. Do you believe in like paranormal stuff? Do you believe in ghosts and like hauntings? So I would definitely say I'm also very skeptical mm. and I am so scared of it because I, I get such heebie-jeebies around anything that has to do with, not that paranormal activity or ghosts have anything to do with, you know. Yeah. You know, devil. But, yeah. but I don't, that stuff. I like that we whisper. <laughs> yeah, you never know when he, and I, this. He doesn't but, listen to podcasts. Okay. Whew. I hate that stuff freaks me out so much that I think I'm extremely closed off to it. I do get scared and I've got a, also a very vivid imagination, but mm. I've never had, I don't know, maybe my body is protecting me from 
I don't know if I would be able to process it and I might just die. Like if, if, mm. if I saw that, I think I would just, I think I would just shoot myself. Cause I'd be like, I don't know how to process this. And my coping skills aren't there yet. You right. never know what's going to happen until it happens. I believe, but it, I'm so closed off to it. Cause I'm so scared that I think yeah. I'm not someone that they would approach. Right. Well, that is something that she told me. She was like, if you're not open to it, like you can create those boundaries and they kind of know. Right. So like in our house, like recently, my apartment, uh, we were hearing noises and like, like stuff was like crashing down and stuff like that. And so I just said out loud to the ghost or what, whatever the kitchen ghost, mm -hmm. I was just like, Hey, you can chill here, but you have to be friendly. Mm. And after that, nothing happened. Really? And it was consistently happening. Like the fan would turn on and like weird shit like that. And then it was just like, now it's just been quiet. And so the psychic was just like, oh, you created um, a boundary with the ghost. Like you, you created a boundary because you guys have a relationship. And I was like, is this bullshit hmm. or real? I don't know. Um, did you first start seeing those energy readers? Was it something you were doing for research on something? Or was did something happen when you were like, I really want to get some advice from paranormal type experts honestly one was at like an event for lipstick and they had like an <laughs> energy reader there which i was like this is such a weird it's because they want to match your lipstick with your energy you know what <laughs> I, I mean i'm sure it had some weird marketing spin oh yeah and they're like you this... have to get that one it matches your <laughs> yeah aura. yeah yeah or you're gonna be cursed right um but she literally had a line of people waiting because you know people like eat this stuff up right. and i walked by and she like grabbed my arm she's like i need to read you and I was like, that's not what you want to hear. Right. You don't want to, you don't want to be pulled aside right, by the right. energy reader. Right. Right. And I was yeah, that's like, not oh, the shit. person. Uh, uh, no. And I was like, you know, like when you were younger, you thought you were going to get like scouted at the mall, like modeling. Sure. I like, it wasn't like that. Mm. It was, like, I was like, oh, I have like a demon over me and I think she can see it. And now I'm like, have to deal with that. Absolutely. But she just told me that, um, she said that also Britney Spears is a very old soul. Ooh, she knew how to butter you up. Oh, yeah. She was like, Britney Spears and uh, I think it was Gandhi or someone else that Damn. she said that had. I know, Britney Spears and Gandhi and me. Good company. <laughs> I mean. You're like, I'm in. Are we? <laughs> I don't know. Um, also, what I'm interested in, though, more um, kind of like something that I'm exploring right now mm. is pet psychic. Oh, interesting. I would love. I'm. It's, I'm always wondering what my dog is thinking. And I was talking to my therapist about it because she was like, you know, you always, I was talking about, I was like, I love my dog so much. Yes. And she was like, well, it's a simple relationship and you kind of, you know what you kind of, it's just, it's, it's just simple. And, and I was like, but I do always wonder what he's thinking. Like I'm so cure and you with your dog you kind of have to let it go pretty quick because you're not going to get anywhere being like so mm. how, you know how so i would you? love i've never even heard of a pet psychic yeah to my actually a girl on instagram that i was about to say my friend but it's like totally a girl i follow on instagram totally um she's like our pet psychic talk to our cats and i was like i need really? to get i need a I, I i mean i think that is like the ultimate bullshit probably is a pet psychic right but also interested you know, I'm like, yes. how much is this? Is this like 50 bucks? Is this right. like 200? I, there's a threshold for like how much I would pay for something right. like this, but I definitely would be interested. Also, I was going to ask you, mm. do you have two dogs now? Here's the deal. So I have the two dogs, but one of them was living, one of them's Bowie. Both of them yeah. are my girl. I Both of them I got through my girlfriend. Right. So Bowie, the dog that's I always posting about, he the reason i bonded with him so much is he is really cuddly like he just mm. will kind of like give in to you you feel like you need to protect him the other dog chloe's 14 and she is obsessed with food so she's she's old and she only <laughs> will cuddle if you have a treat and then she eats the treat runs away so we didn't really bond because she won't cuddle at, at all but right. i do have the two dogs i do have the two but dogs. she does she doesn't like travel with you or anything she can't because she's so old yeah. sometimes we'll like ashley will have her like we had to we drove her, her out to la but other than that now she's like i mean 14 and what's that in human years like yeah 97. especially for little dogs that's like little baby i don't want to bring it up but right, she's right. she's she's in her last right chapter <laughs> we need to see a dog psychic soon yes because I, she will tell you how she's feeling about the future <laughs> it's also She'll tell you what she thinks of that leash that you made her. 
I was watching your Instagram story. I was like, what the hell is Emma doing? You have a, 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 a thigh skin. band? Her skin is so sensitive and her fur is falling off that like whenever she has the other leash on, it turns really red. So I was like, I'm gonna get something a little softer slash I couldn't find it. So then I put that on and I thought it would work, but it just kept going on. She's got such a big belly. It would scoop under her belly and I was like pulling her by her vagina. It was like, we were getting- You don't want to be walked by by your vagina. Yeah, we were getting looks. The neighborhood that we're in in LA, there, people, you know, people are always taking walks and stuff. In so in Texas, growing up with your mom, you mentioned that your mom always instilled body confidence in you. Where do you think your mom got that from? You know, I think- And I that's a great say, thing. Look, you know what, I will say, I think it was less about instilling body confidence and that we just didn't talk about it a lot. And I hmm. actually think that's the way that people can become more body confident hmm. because I don't believe in body positivity. I think it's bullshit actually because- What is body positivity exactly? You know, when people are like, be body positive and it's like, just like think nice thoughts about your body. Well, that's like, who always thinks nice thoughts about their body? Right. I guess like, it's like you're supposed to try. Right. But then what happens inevitably is you feel like shit about your body one day. You're like, ugh, I look. Right. And then you feel bad for even having the thought mm. of feeling bad mm. about yourself. So it's like shame on top of shame. So right. I kind of subscribe to body confidence, which is like just acceptance yes. and just being like, we're good. Like moving right. forward, we have good days, we have bad days. I think though people always ask me in on um, instagram and when i speak and stuff like that is like how do i achieve that mm. and i think it's like thinking about your body less mm. and i think that's why growing up like we didn't talk about bodies at home really although my mom was definitely a low fat mom and she loved right. like a snack wells moment well that was, was like, the thing that was why? Low, that's when it's like that is bad <laughs> think of it even just in our lifetimes the amount of different messages we've gotten about don't eat carbs i eat know carbs don't eat meat eat meat the amount of different things that we've got it's similar to politics where you're like well what the fuck is going on because everyone is saying things with such conviction how and in the beginning you're like okay 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 but now it's like well how do i discern this if i can't actually talk to these people and even if i could i wouldn't know how to frame it i remember, remember when we like everyone was like don't eat dairy right don't right. drink dairy milk right. so we're all like oh we're on the fucking almond yep. milk right. track we're yep. like okay almond milk sucks but we're gonna just pretend like it's it like milk because right. it, it, milk is better i'm right. sorry it just milk's better totally um and i i like i like milk i'm sorry um but you had almond milk and then they came out last year and they were like almonds are terrible for the environment <laughs> almond milk's ruining everything do not drink almond milk and i'm like right. what the fuck are we doing right and who and and then they're also like you're the almonds are running out they'll say that they're like <laughs> the almonds are being depleted you guys have been yeah. taking all the almonds i'm like because you fucking milked all, think, all of them right you they milked all of them <laughs> And now we're out of almonds and the cows are like gonna infest our neighborhoods. I don't right. know, but it's it's that nobody knows really what is best long-term, I think. Sure. Um, probably safe to bet just like eating normal foods and like not, you know, living off of just Postmates is probably right. like best. But I think, you know, from when I was little, I did absorb some of that diet culture. Mm. The body stuff, not as much the diet culture for sure, because- Everything in my house was like fat free, low fat, right, right. Yep. diet food. And I was just like, is this what people eat? Right. And then and I you're would go over that word all the time diet, diet, diet. Oh, yeah. Diet. Low yeah. fat, fat right. free. And it's right. like, and and if you've ever like, you know, you go to over a friend's house or something and I'm like, wait, you guys have chips? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You guys Harrison have chips? house for me. I oh remember that. God. And his mom, I would be like, can I please stay at Harrison's? Can I please stay at Harrison's? And she would make tater tots. Oh chips. my God. In the oven, like the good frozen tater tots. She was a badass bitch. I'll tell you that. I was just like, and oh, and we got to watch, did, I don't know how your parents were with TV, but we didn't, my mom would, we'd get like two hours of TV, one hour of TV. And Harrison's mom would let us watch, not to blow up her spot, but she would let us watch Jerry Springer. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I would sneak Jerry Springer. Yeah. For people that like didn't grow up in that generation, like I feel like they really missed out. Jerry Springer and like, remember Jenny Jones? Oh yeah. I like Jerry better, but I like Jenny Jones. Yeah, and then afterwards course. he's got like, was questions. The OG. He was the oh, OG. Yeah. You're like, like, what's a um, KKK clan member? Why does the KKK clan member that only has sex with little people also want to have sex <laughs> with his sister? <laughs> and your mom's like, what? <laughs> 
heard my mom, my mom, for some reason, I think let me watch that, but I never was allowed to watch The Simpsons. Oh, that's so funny. That's she so was like, funny. no Simpsons, no Beavis and Butthead. And well, I also grew up in like a conservative Christian house. I wanted so, to ask where religion yeah. was for you growing up. Like were your parents religious or where, and where does that, what's been your journey with that? Yeah. So my mom, I grew up religious. My dad wasn't around mm. at time when I was little. And then we like, weren't so like in contact, like it was pretty much from like high school, from junior high on, he was not living with us. Mm. So it was basically me and my mom, but my mom in sixth grade, when I was in sixth grade, not when she was in sixth grade, right. uh, decided to become a pastor. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so she's a, she's like a full blown pastor. Wow. And like, we moved to Dallas with no money. She went to seminary, which is like church school basically, mm -hmm. and got her master's in divinity, which is, sounds really like cool. Sounds and, awesome. um, it was, you know, what was great about it? Here's what I learned from it. Like I didn't become really religious from it or like super Christian from it. But what I did realize is that you can do whatever the fuck you want at mm. whatever age you want. Mm. And I think it has continuously made me less afraid of change and, and new things in the future. Cause I'm like, you can reinvent yourself at 40. You can yes. reinvent yourself at 30, at 50, whatever. And watching my mom do that in such a radical way, I think has helped me. So she but, wasn't on you about, she wasn't like, you have to no. believe in, oh, wow, that's amazing. Like, she was just like, you know, you can go to church if you want to. She was never like pushing it down my throat, which is why I think I wanted to go. And I yeah, that's totally. how you, if you want your kids to be religious, just tell them not to go or that they right. don't have to. Totally. But then and show them that faith. there's, but also there's like, where there was a lot of cute boys at my church. Mm. <laughs> and like, I... I got, I did my first hand job at church. Really? Yeah. Like in the church? At a church, at a church lock-in. Oh, fuck yeah. That's awesome. Which you can't lock a bunch of kids in, in a room that I've are like. I've never heard of a church lock-in. I didn't know that was a thing. I don't think it's a good idea. You lock well, a bunch of teenagers in a room with like very minimal supervision at mm -hmm. night. Because of Jesus is watching. Sure. But I gave a hand job. Did they, what was their, why did they tell you they were going to do that? What, like, what? Well, it's just like a, a fun thing. It was like a Saturday night lock-in. It was right. like a church thing. It was like a, it's like a co-ed mixer, like a dance, but overnight, which huh. you really don't need to have when you're no, like no. in that I'm, stage of your life. Everyone's so horny that you're just like, this is not good. Right. And uh, yeah, no, I, I liked going to church mostly because there were like cute boys there and you could like flirt sure. and your mom wasn't suspect of what you were doing. Mm, because you're like on the Lord's time kind of. Totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm like at job. youth group. Right. At first I also had job. like, I, I also had a crush on my youth pastor at one mm, time. That helps. That which, helps. You know, they first like play the job. guitar. Yeah. They, well, also they're like, you're like mini celebrity too. Cause like a teacher, totally. a youth pastor, it's, First hand job is a scary. Well, I remember it was probably different. Maybe it's different because I was gay, but I didn't know it. But I remember the first time I gave a hand job, I was not into it. I freaked out. Really hard to probably compare notes on that because of the difference in sexuality there. But yeah, I was freaked out of my fucking mind. Was it? No, I think it was probably a pretty similar experience. I, I was, was pretty so like scared. I was like scared, and I was like, I don't like this. This doesn't I didn't feel like, like it. something I'm good at. Yeah, I was like, I mean, first of all, a hand job. Although it's funny, I had a friend like two years ago and so she's our age too she was like she went to a movie and she's like i fucking gave this guy a hand job on my date and i was like what the fuck i was like i thought hand jobs like were outdated she's like oh no like they're still a thing and i was like you know really? i think you could bring them back like i right. think you could bring it back to like mix it up yeah and maybe if it's like in a public place where you can't give a blow job but because a hand job is but men are so good at giving hand jobs because they hand job themselves all the time so it's like True. You're competing with the like the best, but I guess the that's best true for the for best, the dream team of hand the dream team. He's got his hands right there, and then you're doing your I've, fucking. I've been hands. watching the Michael Michael Jordan documentary. So that's why I'm bringing up the good. dream. Oh, How that good documentary was so good. He, he, the I'm so ease. inspired. I'm so inspired. The ease of which he was doing things, I thought, was just absolutely incredible. Well, and just like how he like is as a person, you're just like loved he, it. He just like he's like I just want to be the best at yes. what I do man, I wish I had that sort of motivation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, really you don't. say you have, that's a theme in a lot of stuff that you posted about like focusing on yourself and being the best that you can be. And, you know. Yeah. But I, I try to set a reasonable bar for myself. Mm. I definitely don't set a Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Bar. <laughs> True. No, 
No, like True. for me, it's like, I want to be like, I don't like hustle culture. I don't like really? that. No, I don't. I used to like very much subscribe to it. And I think it's total bullshit now. It's really not for me. It, it can be really bad for my mental health for sure. Yes. And the, the combination of living in New York and feeling like you need to hustle is not a recipe for any kind of peace or happiness. When you're in it, you know that. And you're like, yep. well, I'm just doing it because I got to get to this to get to that, to get to this, to get to that, to da, 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 da. You're never in the moment. So, but I've never thought of it as not like hustle culture, but a whole, I just think of it as hustle culture in New York. What is, what is hustle culture to you? I think um, social media makes it like pretty mm. bad. Oh, because fuck, that's true. It's oh my just God. like, you're always seeing what so true. everyone else is doing all the time. And you know, what's funny is like, I have people message me. They're like, I don't know how you do all the things that you do in a day. And I guess for me, I don't even think about that. But but even on that very base level, we're all just at the height of comparison to each other. Like, and I'm sure in comedy, it's the same thing. What gigs is that person doing? Are they doing like Zoom shows? Are they trying to do YouTube? Are they trying to do TikTok? Like, what is everyone doing? And I think what happens is we become so deluded in what we actually want to do because we're just trying to keep the same balls in the air as everybody else, which is like fucked up because you're not, you're, you're not made the same, first of all, and you're not good at all the same things. And mm -hmm. also like, even with doing what I do right now is like, quote unquote, like, I guess I, I don't like calling myself an influencer, but cause there's a lot of like stupid people. It's that are what it's called for the talking point of it. It's a tricky word, but it is also like, when you say it, I know what you mean. I know what yes. you mean, but I can yes. absolutely see how that can be a, a tricky word to it, but you know what? It's not guru. Remember when guru, people were like, oh, oh there's yeah. social media guru. I don't think that's good. So, you know what? I think it's kind of like, I see it kind of like the word politician. Mm. Like politician, the inherent feeling that people get when you say someone is a politician, they're like, Ugh, I don't right. like politicians. Right, right. But then you're like, how do you feel about Barack Obama? And most right. people are, I love Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. I want to meet Barack Obama. Right. I love hearing what he has to say. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's that. So it's, it's, to me, it's like some politicians are shitty. Some right. politicians are good. Right. You it's know, a big umbrella. so it, but, but it is that word connotation mm -hmm. that I don't love, but in, in my job doing like influencer work, I also am just seeing what everyone else is doing right. all the time. And when the internet is your job, Literally. and I'm sure you feel like this too, when the internet is your job, you're just like, am I getting as many podcast streams right. as this person? Am I as hot as this person? Yep. Am I, you know, getting as many partnerships? Am I making the same amount of money? And so you do get in your own head sometimes, but I, I definitely work on that a lot. And sometimes I'm just like, okay, I'm just not going to look at what other people are doing mm -hmm. at all. And I'm just going to focus and do what I like to do, but it is hard to shut it off. It's hard. And also that I think that I really think that happens in any career because I, even when I, I think it happens like with anything you're doing, it's like kind of human nature to be like, well, what's going And there's some, sometimes it can be like, like there have been certain things where me seeing someone else do something where I was looking propelled me to be like, oh, they're doing that. I can do that then. Sure. And that was actually good, but that's like few and far between in the comparison right. department. And with social media, would, it's literally no. the most in your face. I would say like, for me, there's a different between like inspiring and motivating me mm -hmm. to like true rather than just like comparing true. like those two things feel really different do you feel like with comedy especially right now because everyone kind of has time to look at everybody I everybody was just has gonna the time. ask you if you how it was, corona was affecting the looking around you know I, here's the thing I can't quite tell because this is where this was a timeline for me so right before we go into lockdown right I'd say I had done this reality show in Maine about this woman that yes, sold the moose poop, poop, right? The poop, the poop. Yes. And I didn't, I did have a lot of tour dates on my calendar for April. But other than that, it was like, I had had a bunch of balls in the air and a lot of them had popped. So I was kind of like, shit. And I had these like a bunch of shows in this one month. But other than that, I was like, wow. Because I really feel at least in entertainment a lot of times, whatever you're doing is the result of six months before. So about right. six months before, I can tell how people, like I remember there was when I was doing like Crazy Acts and Netflix and Colbert just come out. That was all like in a certain month span. And everyone was like, Whoa! and I was like, actually right now though, in about six months, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a little dead. And it's like, they're like, what are you talking about? And I maybe that was more information than anyone needed, but it's just like, you can kind of track it. So I was tracking oh in about six months from now unless i 
so one of these auditions pulls through or something happens, it's going to be a little, I got to figure that out. Maybe not a good way to look at stuff. It's just kind of what, how I, I mean, if it's realistic, it is absolutely realistic. I yet to be surprised by this theory. So when Corona hit at first, I was like, Ooh, because it was like wiping the slate clean for everybody. <laughs> You're like, no one's got shit to do. And I can put it all on Corona. I was like, oh yeah, fucking Corona. Just fucking whapped it all out. <laughs> that was the first month. And then also now it's like, oh, you can only have clubs at 25% capacity. And it was like, you know, maybe it, maybe I was getting clubs at 50% and or besides a couple cities, but I was all of a sudden, I was like, fucking great. I feel You're like, like I'm sold out. I, exactly. I was like, this <laughs> is my time Every to shine, baby. <laughs> so that I felt good about, but then I really have noticed recently, and I don't know if it's just because uh, there's like, there's, I'll have like one person or two people, really just one person in particular, where I'll kind of like be that them. I'm like, I need to not be following what they're doing. Cause I have it in my mind where I'm like, okay, if I think someone's really talented and they get something, I appreciate it. If I then think, but I'm not the judge of who's fucking talented. It's subjective. Right. So what am I even, anything that I think is based on my own fear, which is why I, Actually, the quote, one of the quotes I highlighted where I was like, I felt like you were talking right to me was you said, empathy for me is at the heart of everything. So I wanted to dig down beyond the surface emotion of jealousy and really get to the root. Fear. Exactly. Yep. It's all fear based and it has everything to do with me and not them. But to answer that recently, I had been doing it so much more that I just did this really simple thing. My friend Robin was like, why don't you unfollow that person? And I did. And then I have felt better because it's not about them. It might pop up somewhere else, but sure. you just have to de-trigger and you have to learn that it really is fear and then, and then get to the root of what the fear is for you. Has it been worse for you since lockdown or no? Uh, it's been a weird uh, time to obviously be like trying to talk about, like, I don't just talk about, like, I feel like most influencers that people might think of if, you, if you're not familiar with me in particular like a lot of influencers talk about like a lot of like light subject matter let's say light sure, subject sure, matter sure. like you know I mean yeah sure I talk about like beauty and skincare and clothes and hair and but that's a very minimal part of what I talk about I right. talk about like a lot more of like kind of internal process mental health like all these different things yes. so for me I I'm already in the business of talking about heavy shit mm. So then you put on like a uh, pandemic <laughs> activism. Mm -hmm. Everyone is just like pointing at each other of who's not doing the, enough, saying the right thing, doing the right thing. And then also how I make money is doing partnerships with brands. So obviously no brand wants to do, and I didn't either, wants to put out, you know, an advertisement like in the middle of like massive civil unrest you know, right. which I didn't want to either. So it was a really weird thing juggling my job and like my words, but then also, um, you know, to be honest, Emma, like I have just like felt people's despair. Just I was, like, I was just wondering about that as you were saying that, how much are you taking on? I mean, does it so much, does your empathy, does your like take on for stuff? This is maybe really stupid, but does it, ch this is like, does it change if you're inside or outside? Like if you're in your apartment, are you better able to like buffer taking on other people's emotions or does it, is it, does social media make that not the case? Like how is, how do you, like, can you set like a little like guard? Boundary. Yeah. yeah. No, you know what? I have to do it by just not looking at my phone mm. um, at times, but I get over, I probably get on a very normal slow day when I haven't, when I'm not, you know, doing anything that really people want to chat about, I probably get between 200, 300 messages a day. Sure. sure. So I have to, I, I try to answer everyone as best I can. And what I saw this crazy shift during COVID, but then also like Black Lives Matter protests, activism now, election and thinking about the world and also just like the world feels like it's just on fire literally and figuratively. Mm-hmm. I have felt people just heavy, mm. um, heavy in a lot of different ways. So some people come to me and they're just like, I am just 
out, like I, I'm out of energy. I'm out of things. A lot of people have obviously been experiencing like losing their jobs and their relationships breaking up in quarantine. God. I talk a lot about relationships. And so the amount of people that I've had come to me and say, say, say that they have broken up or filed for divorce mm. or all these things during this time has been like exponential. What do you think that is? You think it's the stress of the pandemic yeah. or spending more time together? I mean, in the beginning, I definitely noticed Ashley and I were bickering more, yeah. yeah, which I would put on the amount of time suddenly that we were spending together. It was like my method of doing something isn't necessarily the same as yours. And normally that's fine. But if we're together for 24 hours, maybe where you don't use a coaster and I like, it's like fucking becomes yeah. a thing. I, I, I think that we're not used to um, having to cope all at the same time with right. something. Yeah. Like, like, you know, like totally. you might be going through something, but Ashley may not. Yes. So you yes. can, she can take a little bit of that on. It, it, totally. We're all, when we're all fucking coping and we're having to, it's very hard to do that with people. That is the goddamn truth. Exactly. It's, it's almost impossible, actually. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because so many people were writing into my podcast asking about, like, me and my partner are fighting a lot during this time. Does this mean that we're not supposed to be together? And mm. I said, no, I think this means that you are in a um, unprecedented moment in the history. You are going through um, physical, emotional, and relational turmoil because you don't know how to deal with this and no one does. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, any coping mechanism that we used to have, whether that's seeing <laughs> friends, sure. exercise, like, I'm sorry, I love my Peloton bike and I don't mind working out in the little gym downstairs. It's not the same. Right. It's not the same as going to a yoga class. It's not the same as like having community. It's just not sure. the same. The process and is taken away too. Totally. Whereas like, like I enjoyed not having the process of trekking around to stuff for like work type things, but I did enjoy the process, you know, going and getting a coffee. And then there's that yes. interaction there and those little things that's like, when you move, I don't know if you've experienced this. That's like kind of what I'll miss. I'll go, I, I missed the guy at the pharmacy mm, yep. and I missed that. Yep. And I didn't think of that. So now all of that's just taken away. Well, I think we are like creatures of comfort. We love routines. Sure. Even if they're like small routines, like you said, walking down to the coffee mm -hmm. shop and when that's taken away, like for me, it's not even just like the walking down to the coffee shop. It's okay. That little space of time that I gave myself in the morning. Oh, that was also the time that I like love listening to podcasts. Mm. Oh, I don't have as much time to do that because I'm always with my partner and he right. doesn't want to listen to the same things as me. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, it's like all these really nice parts of our day kind of got stripped away and mm -hmm. we had to take time to figure out what the new ones were. Yes. Um, I think we're all still probably figuring that out, yes. but I did feel that from my community online. Um, and as like an empath, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm like really having to like shoulder some of this with mm -hmm. them. Um, and then I think there was like a bunch of other like unexpected shit, like body image stuff. Like I have felt really like confident about my body for many years now. And, and you gotta, I'll put a link to it, but the article of your weight loss I forget the amount of pounds, 75? 70. 70. Gained 15 back. Now probably gain five more. Don't know. Don't have a scale. Huge, yeah. Huge amount. It's not about, yeah, there should be a different way to phrase it about huge weight loss. It's not about the pounds, sorry, but drastic, big. Yes. But it's interesting because you're talking about, because to me, I associate when I was heavy with me, you, um, lots of emotional, I'm very addict-y, addict eating. Mm -hmm. So when you were talking about it, uh, in one of the interviews, you're like, I was having a good time. I was just yeah. partying a lot and it, you know, it just kept on, it affected me like that, which is usually everyone, it's not, that's not, that's not the narrative you normally hear. Um, and the, the really, the really part of the narrative that you never hear is like when I was at my thinnest, I was just like the right. most upset with my body that yeah. I've ever been. I was so hard on myself. I wasn't happy. I felt less confident than I ever had felt. Sure. You know, and I think that I think that people think that if they get to their ideal body type, that for some reason, like the switch flips and you become happy with yourself. Right. And I think it actually, it's more of a magnifying glass on your issues mm -hmm. than anything. And I think you can lose weight, gain weight, become healthier, become fitter. I, I don't think it has as much to do with the actual action. It's more like the mindset surrounding it. So Absolutely. like when I was when I was trying to lose weight, I was just being crazy. You know, right. I was just, I, I remember like, there's like a, a dreaded app. Do you, have, do you know about MyFitnessPal? Never heard of it. 
Okay. It's an app where you just track every single thing you eat and it's the worst. You like you have Is to it? put in like, like literally you type in like, uh, Jif peanut butter, two tablespoons. <laughs> and it like right. tracks everything like one half tablespoon of olive oil. I remember one day I was like literally typing in celery. Mm. And I'm like, I don't need to know the fucking calories of celery. This is right. stupid. I was like, this right. is so dumb. And this is now becoming like Obsession. obsessive. Yeah. I would have never said I had like any sort of disorder with it, but definitely I just became too focused on it. Sure. And I was like, this does not make me happy. Right. But, you know, it's, it's interesting because after that, I feel like I really got to a confident, you know, comfortable place with mm. myself. But during this pandemic, I've had more like negative body image stuff that's come up. Hmm. Interesting, like when you have the time and space to think about it. And also yep. like, obviously we're out of our routines, right. how much more I've been hard on myself. And so if anyone's listening right now and they feel like, why am I so like down on myself? Like you're not alone. You are like, not, you're so uh, not alone. And just the sheer adjustment of everything. It, it's the adjustment. I mean, it's also not knowing, how, like I, I found when we first went into, into this, I didn't even try to do any Zoom exercising and and for mental health wise, that's so important to yeah. for me. Like, and I, I know that's like well documented for lots of people, but I didn't even, I think part of not wanting to try and even set it was a way of being like, well, we'll be back. I'll be back to whatever. Right. So I, I put it off for months and months and months. Did it, was it, did you just totally, like, did you adapt quickly to like, okay, I'll do these exercises or? You know what? I did, I did order a Peloton bike many months great. before that. So oh, I had that. But like, it wasn't so much even that I, I just, I think I was just so anxious mm -hmm. about like everything and I got sick. So, so tell me I, about the Corona. What was that I got like? the Rona. You got the um, Rona. Yeah, I definitely got the Rona. But at the time, like obviously our country is such a shit show that I couldn't even get tested. Ah. So yeah, but so I mean- This was so, like early on in it? Yeah, I got it in March. Damn it. Literally, my boyfriend and I were playing Switch, and we were playing this game that, like, you are rowing down a river. Just don't ask. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> I was, like, feeling so tired from doing mm. it. I'm like, I should not feel tired from moving my controller. Right, right, right. Yeah, Your like, thumbs. this is, I was like, wow, this is a new fucking low for me. <laughs> um, but then I was like, huh, I feel hot. And I took right. my temperature, and I knew it. The second uh. it started to turn, it was like, corona. And then I didn't have it as bad, obviously, as many people do. So, like, I'm pretty healthy and I take care of myself. I was pissed because my boyfriend doesn't do shit for himself. I he drink, like, it. tinctures and, like, Ooh. work out. And I'm, like, fucking drinking ginger tea and all this I stuff. And tea, tincture. like, I'm going to make you a tincture. I if you're in New York, I'm going to give you a tincture. I would love that because I'll drink juices and stuff like that, but I don't know if I've had a tincture. I've, I've got oh, yeah. si apple cider fucking with... Oh yeah, I like I'll make you a little something like fresh shaved ginger. You should turmeric. You know what? I feel like um Erwan in LA has that like True. completely yes, covered. You can go get a twenty-six dollar tincture there. Love Erwan, yeah. Um, but yeah. I was so pissed because my boyfriend like survives on pepperoni pizza and right, I and didn't was get one it? no. Really? Never got sick. I think he gave it to me, truthfully. I think Ooh. he was a asymptomatic and he gave it to me Ooh. and then I suffered. You're giving yourself but, lots of fuel to, yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> you, when oh, you're yeah. walking, watching him walk around the apartment, you're like, where oh. did I get this? You. You. Literally, I would, I was just like, I can't fucking believe it. Right. And I didn't want him to get sick. Of course, I'm not like an evil right. person. I did not want to see him suffer because obviously men are such babies when it comes to getting sick. Like <laughs> men are truly the worst mm. to, to be sick. They can't take it. Um, so I was glad that I wasn't having to deal with that, but I was pissed because I was like, how I was the one wiping down my groceries. Mm, I was carefully Lysoling. Like I would literally disinfect a banana. Damn. That is where I was at Damn. and I still got it, but everybody in New York was sick and I lived right. in a right. neighborhood that was like extremely sick. So I got the Rona, but during the Ron, I couldn't work out at all. Right. And then for like two weeks after that, I couldn't work out either. So Which I got in the grand real scheme thrown of it, off. In, in the grand scheme of it, that's not long. But while you're in it, no. then it becomes oh, yeah. like a mental exercise for yourself. When and now I'm in the process of like being like, 
now I started to dread working out, hmm. which you, it used to be such a part of my routine. I would just do it every day. And now I'm like dreading it because I just didn't do it for so long. Oh, it's fucking brutal. Ugh, getting back into it is so, is so hard. It's so, well, now you get to go back and take your own advice. You can like look I back know. through what you've said before and be like, Fuck. it's but brutal. Do you ever, do you ever do this? You're like, <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'm sure most people do. You like think about like, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, I could like start like working out really hard and like eating really super healthy. But like Thursday, like next Thursday is my birthday. So I'll just wait till after my birthday. And then I'm like, oh, well then I'm gonna fucking freeze my eggs. So I'm gonna get all bloated anyway. Plus I deserve when I'm freezing my eggs to do whatever right. the fuck I want. And I'm not allowed to work out anyway. So I guess I'll just start after that. It's gonna be fucking Halloween and I'm gonna be just getting back into it. You literally have, you play like the trial lawyer, defendant and totally. judge all in your own head. And it's just a bunch of different yous being like, boom. And the one that wins every time is the one that like you already kind of went in talking yourself out of. Oh yeah. I've done that before. I used to especially do it with drinking. Like I'd be like, if I huh. stop drinking now, see that's not gonna work because in seven months, I remember thinking this and then I had to stop myself and go in seven months, you're going to be, I was like in seven months, I'm filming this three day pilot. And I bet, I bet the producers are going to want to go for drinks afterwards. And if I say wow. I can't go to for drinks, they're going to be like, she's not, she's not fun. And if I go for drinks, we'll all get drunk. And then, you know, it'll everything. You need to teach a master class in this because I'm like, but wow, I didn't seven do it. Months. So I didn't do it. I was like, I'm just gonna stop drinking right now. And then when that came, it, no one gave two flying fucks. I was like, even right. if I did drink, I wouldn't want to go out afterwards anyway. I'm exhausted, right. you know? Like, are it, you, did you stop drinking totally or, or are you I drinking a little totally. bit? It's easier for me wow. to just not drink totally. It's so much easier because I just like taking things to an extreme. So if I'm going to do it, I want to be drunk. And I love drinking though. Like I love tequila. I love vodka. Sure. I love, it can be so fun, but also with comedy at night and wanting the buffer, it's just easier for me to just like kind of kind of not do that yeah i mean i was like I, I was like are you drinking or eating dairy or something not because your skin looks amazing well i have a filter i my skin looks okay in real life but this filter smooths it all out but it looks really good i fucking appreciate that it's Thank like so glowy much. And so is yours and i'm using oil that and also we're both probably getting a lot of sleep i'm getting more mm -hmm. sleep oh yeah never in my life have i gotten this much sleep since have i was you, a baby like I, 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 it is unreal, like waking up without an alarm. Oh, and I'm in bed at like, like nine. I know it actually, I, I was, my boyfriend and I were talking about this. We're like, are we okay? Cause we've been getting really tired at like 10 PM. Yes. And then I'm like, no, I think this is just, I think this is just how like you're supposed to act. Right. Your body is set to a thing. Did you know, did you have a premonition about your boyfriend before you met him? Um, that I was going to meet him. That you were going to meet him or like when you first saw him, did you did it yeah. like set off your like spidey senses or like totally. what was that like and how'd you guys meet uh tinder mm. so actually i ignored I him tinder. i oh me too it's Tinder's i mean great. it's like quick and dirty you know you just like right. get it's like less like bumble i'm like ugh, i don't want to message someone and i love the swiping i remember swiping back in the day before you know just going i was like such a man quote unquote broad generalization you're about but i was go Oh my God, you were the worst. And then this, this is I the would, kind of people I hate. And then it would be like, you're done. And then I would go back, see who I match with. And, I, and then I look and be like, I match with that motherfucker. What are they fucking thinking? But I'm sure they were just over there like, but that I used to okay. do that. And then I would see who no. I matched up with. No. Oh because yeah. Because I would be on the other end like this. I'd be like, let me look at the distance between his elbow and his wrist. It doesn't Couldn't look really swipe short. fast enough. Just literally. Literally, I remember one time I was doing a show, New Year's Eve in the middle of Times Square. So this is Times Square, New Year's Eve. I'm waiting to go on, swiping. I get off stage, I do a couple more, up, up, and then I look at my phone and they go, it basically said, you're out of people. In Times Time Square, Square. <laughs> on New Year's fucking Eve. At the 42nd Street AMC <sighs> show was at the movie theater. And it was like, you're, you have to move locations. And I was like, oh, I'm where all the people are. I've gone through the you people. You matched with about 45 closeted girls from Minnesota that night. <laughs> Just like. And then I don't even go back and look at it. So, so, but, so you guys met on. No, you guys met I'm on so, I was, I'm so particular. And so I was so picky about who I, like, I know it's not a big deal to swipe on someone, but I felt that it was. So uh, we well, met you're on saving Tinder. people time when you're doing it your way. I'm yes. wasting everybody's time. I'm waste. I mean, I'm not wasting that much of my time, so that makes it even more problematic. But it's, 
it's like, you know, it's not you're, considerate. I just don't want to give anyone false hope. You know, I just want to, I want to like make sure that they really know that I'm, you know, unavailable if I am. So right. we met on Tinder and then we had started talking and then I got bored and just stopped talking and I deleted Tinder. And then I got the back on one day Tinder? just talking. Yeah. Talking. Just like the whole thing. Was it, and you I had kind of, made the move to meet up in person quick enough? I had kind of like started talking to my ex again uh, yeah. and like going on a few dates with him and it was Christmas and we like went and got a fucking tree together. You Damn. know, it was like one of those. Whoa, you know, that's a big fucking date. You know, no, but it was at Home Depot. So it wasn't like a Christmas tree farm, like cuteness. It was like, can you walk to Home Depot with me? So it's like medium cute. <laughs> that's so funny. That's so true. You're like, pause. Where'd you get that Christmas tree at? Home Depot. Exactly. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, did yeah, we yeah. drive upstate and strap it on the top of the car and like drink hot cocoa? No. Right. Um, so yeah, so I deleted it and then we, I ended up downloading it one day to like look at a message and I saw he had messaged me. So I, I just was like, yeah, I'll respond. He immediately was like, Hey, you don't seem to be on here much. Can I text you? I was like, like, ew. Okay. And then, um, he came on like kind of strong Good for him. with like asking me out, which now I know is like such a nice thing. Yes, and absolutely. I ignored him for, I, I, and then I skipped our first date. I really um, brain checked. And then he pursued me still. Now, and then on this, our first date, I just knew. And was the boyfriend that you were going back and forth with, was that you think that's the main culprit with it? No, I was just like really bad. I dated everyone in New York. Like I feel mm. like I dated like everyone. Like literally I was out to breakfast with a friend and she's like, I'm, I'm engaged to this guy. And then I was like, I looked at the picture. I'm like, fuck, I dated him. Even though you were selective on the Tinder? Oh yeah. Hmm. I, I mean, I was getting cream of the crop. I'm going right. to say it. Like I was getting the, 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 the real, the good ones. Isn't that um, great? Yeah. Oh, you're like, it was, I really had a time. Sometimes you look, I'll look back. If there's, if there's nothing else I can even say, I relate to that. I'll say, I don't know how I fucking did that. Cause and I, you look I, back and you're like, yeah, that, literally that was doing, mine for a moment. And doing the, sh I remember there was a time I was doing like the, sh the just open mics and I had this fucking god awful apartment, and I was kind of going to grad school, and I was dating this like smoke show who was like the head of a venture capital firm. And I wish, I wish I could bring that up more. Like I wish there were ways I could just let people know that I fuck any other credit. I want to be like I was in this relationship. Wow, I you know, and that's a lot of personality. If you if you're, you're like forget that in. forget Netflix, forget Comedy Central, forget uh you know Crazy X. Look this what I is enabled. my thing. This, you know, I mean, there's a lot of shit shows in between there, but there's just like that because that is dating is people skills too, as people, as you know, but it's a oh, tough, yeah. it's tough, it's tough. I mean, here's the thing like, I dated, I dated people that I like am so proud that I dated. I was like, oh my God, look at this, like, fucking Adonis. But then yeah. also, I had like dated like skaters that were like, I only get off like by you jerking me off with your feet. And I'm like, right. ah, <laughs> like, so it's, there's a rent, like there's yes, a right wise. Totally, totally, totally. <laughs> like, I'm not going to get like too high horse on it. But right. yeah, we, totally. um, we met. And after I think our fourth date, I said, I love you first. Wow. Yep. And I was actually dating my boyfriend and this other guy and we were tracking date for date. And then on the fourth date, I had to be like, I don't want to see this other guy anymore. Mm. I want to just hang with you. And then I adopted my dog like a week later, and then he became like a dog father week five. That's so sweet. I know. That's so he, sweet. And he just basically like moved in. Which How long have you guys also, been together now? A year and a half now. Okay, so that's literally about the same as me and my girlfriend. Yeah. About actually, a year and a half. Um, I think... I think that is actually like right when I started dating him was the first time I ever saw you at a show. At really? Eastville. Yeah. Oh, that's and I actually so looked funny. you up because I saw you, I think it was Eastville. I don't remember. It was, a was it the one show. in Brooklyn? Cause it used to be, yeah. Uh, yeah, they had the, if it was in Brooklyn, it must've been Eastville. Yeah. So I saw you at a show and I was like, Oh, this person's so funny. Thank you. I and then I like it. looked you up on Instagram and then we watched a bunch of your clips online because like obviously like i mean everyone listening here has heard like your man one thing I really and appreciate i that. just fucking died like you thank did it you. in person and i died i was like i have to listen to this again because it was so funny thank you um but yeah so it was actually around that time because hmm. we had gone to one of your shows was one of our first dates that's so crazy. Oh, Emily, you brought us together. I, yeah, I'll take all the credit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's You're practically not, our matchmaker. That's such <laughs> a good, that's a good first date too. It's better than a movie. 
yeah. because comedy, if the show goes bad, you can talk about it. If the show goes good, you can talk about it. I don't recommend sitting up front, but it's like, and you can oh, also God. kind of gauge each other's sense of humor and how, and also you can see how the person is when someone else is taking the reins because then the comedian is kind of leading it. So you go, okay, are you, you know, God forbid all of a sudden they can't handle not being in control of the situation and they start like heckling, then that's like red oh, flag. Oh God. Or if they're just like not laughing at anything funny, mm -hmm. you're like, Ugh. Absolutely. I think, I think, um, I think I would be, I always get called out at comedy shows. Really? I, like, oh, I'm like the person that always gets crowd work. Why do you like, think that is? I have no idea, but it's been since I was like hmm. a little kid. When I was a little kid, every amusement park I would go to or every like show, like little, like everything I got pulled up. That was just hmm. like, I, I've always had that. And I'm just sound like I'm bragging about like being pulled up at Disney or like at the <laughs> or something. But like, I mean, I was just like feeding a fish to a dolphin. It's not like I right. didn't have talent. But uh, you know what I bet? Maybe you had an open look. Maybe, I mean, mm -hmm. you're very glowy. You do glow, but I'll, and maybe you had like an uh, air of this person is gonna be receptive, you know, yeah. for Disney. Comedy shows usually depends where the person's sitting, where the eye line is. Or actually, if I'm being totally honest, it can be if you're just sensing someone's energy. So maybe yeah. people were sensing- I'm always very open and very which, like, I always try to smile at comedians. Yes. Because I know, because I've done so much speaking that when you look at sure. the audience and everyone looks angry, you're just like, oh, oh fuck. God. I do the same thing if I go to a talk. I literally, I'm like smiling mm -hmm. and And I'm nodding. Nodding mm -hmm. so, yeah, I do that too. I'm, I'm like, I'm just trying to let you know, like it's yep. all, I'm if doing you're, the job. For anyone listening, like if you're ever just in an audience, like if you could just like smile and nod once in a while, it is so important. Like I'll, after I speak at different things, I'll go up to the person that's been like smiling and nodding. I'm like, thank you so much. Like that is just, cause then you're like, you get off stage and you're like, am I the worst? Like, is everyone mad at me? And then people come in and you're like, you did great. And you're like, really? Because mm -hmm. everyone looked mad or bored. Totally. But our, our resting faces are not like great. Right. I actually heard, I actually heard someone, it was a Twitter thread that someone was like, why are Zoom calls so exhausting? Like, why do hmm. you feel so exhausted? And he was saying that he thinks they're so exhausting because everyone is not used to seeing themselves be relaxed in a conversation Oh, interesting. So you're I never hyper, thought about that. So you're hyper aware of what you appear to look like in a resting way. So if you're talking, Emma, right. usually I wouldn't see myself and I wouldn't be aware of what I look like listening. Oh my to God, you. you're blowing my mind. But you're right. right. Wait, I never because thought this is why of it's any Because you're just adjusting yourself. You're like, am I making a weird face? Am oh my I God. looking like, is, am I double chin? What's right. going on? You're but right. This is totally unnatural. And, yeah. and that's like when you see part of being human is like being able to quantify yourself in relation to other things. Holy fuck. Right. Yeah. You're so now too, I we're see me. Too aware. We're too aware. We're not supposed to see ourselves when we're resting. Right. But we are. So right. we're, not, we're getting we're getting the entertainer and audience view right now simultaneously, which is oh. what we don't get. And so what's exhausting about that is we are constantly adjusting ourselves sure. and wanting to appear a certain way. Hmm. And so you can't fully relax. It's interesting too, because I wonder what that's like for people who have not had to watch themselves. Because so when you do public speaking or anything, a lot of times you'll watch the speech back or the setback or something right. at least a few times just to kind of get not not a few times each one. I mean, literally a few, t I'm not great about it. A few times in a huge amount of time, but you're aware of that. Or you'll think about, okay, how do I look through this other person's lens when I'm doing this speaking? So I would think that I actually had a call the other day with someone who is not a public speaker. And um, it was interesting, you know, he kept, he was looking over here the whole time. Huh? And it didn't oh, actually really bother me, but I did think it was interesting. And I'm sure that that was him kind of being like, just not, I wouldn't have even necessarily been aware of it if we were in the same room, but because of the, it's like you're seeing and seeing and yes. seeing the person, you become very aware of what it is. That's really, totally. I never thought about that. Yeah. It's, I never it's, thought about that. It's like why this can be like exhausting. And I imagine, and we're not going to get too into this obviously, but I imagine first kids going to school, mm -hmm. um, like virtually and like, especially in the age range where you're sure. kind of starting to get like self-conscious, I'm right. sure that will be really something to think about. Right, I never thought about that either. So you went. So you were thinking of freezing your eggs. 
No, I am freezing. You I'm are about freezing to start. your eggs. My I'm sister went through start. that. Um, and she, well, she did it twice. She, what, did she end up doing it? My sister went, she did in vitro. Right. And she's been, I mean, it was like a two year process. Um, yeah. What led you to be like, okay, I'm ready to do this? So um, I'm turning 35 in a week. And so I was like, okay, they tell you that like, basically like all your shit dies after 35 or starts dying more rapidly. I'm like, oh God. Um, which I don't know how much. Things, they got to do a like, reframe of some of that. It's you know got to be. Call it? They call mm. it geriatric. God damn. So <laughs> like, honestly, my whole they life. They call your eggs quite, geriatric? Yeah, geriatric. Or you're like, you have a geriatric pregnancy after 35 or 36. So that just does like, we gotta, we gotta switch that up. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I mean, we're talking about the future and our relationship and things like that. But I was like, I don't want to chance it. I'm too much of like Virgo planner to like chance it till I'm 38, which is when we probably will want to have mm-hmm. kids. So I was like, well, I guess I'll put this shit on ice for a mm-hmm. bit. I, I didn't ever know that I wanted kids. I, until about last year, last year I was like, oh, I think I want a kid. Hmm. Um, I always thought it made me very special that I didn't really care to have kids. And it now is I want an a identity. Kid, so I'm it's like, an identity oh, in New York, especially. It's like, oh, no, I don't want a kid or whatever, even though it's right. truly the most magical, wonderful. I mean, I think it's such a, I think, it, I mean, talk about putting, seeing the world through someone else's eyes. I mean, it, bringing everything to a higher purpose. It's an incredible thing to do. Totally. And, and also I, you know, I think my thing is like, I want to be a person that can change their mind mm. and do it like with some sort of grace to it mm. and not be like, no, this was my long held opinion. It's like, well, I think we all need to take the space to just be like, I, I changed my mind on that. I changed my mind. I was wrong. Yeah. Or maybe I was right. Or there's a comedian named Danny Jollis. If he has the joke up, I will send it to you but he has such a great joke about um that we need the grace of changing your mind basically and how we get so set on politicians being like well they voted this way and then they changed and he's like well maybe they changed their fucking mind like do you really want to be voting for the person that refuses to change their minds they're like i hated gay people in second grade and then i liked them when i was 25 and it's like well you said it's like do no you want to be someone who can change your mind yeah, and and also understand that that is actually a benefit that people change their mind, and that yes. is a good attribute. People changing their mind is a good attribute yes. to them because it is an admission of growth. Yes, exactly. And so for me, um, you know, I had to let go of a little bit of the ego of like I'm not like everybody else I went to college with, um, right? And. I had to be like, okay, you know what? Actually, I think this is like something I'd really like to do. And you still, still aren't think- like everybody else. And they're not like, you. Right. you're all different. You know what I mean? And also <laughs> everybody does fucking parenting in their own way. Like, Amen. It, totally. It, it doesn't have to, like, I don't have to name my kid Madison and like right. do like a little letter board next to that's like 18 months today. Like right. we don't have to do that. You can do you know, whatever it, you it want be, within reason. It can be whatever. Right. Like flash forward, literally three years, me and Madison together. Right, right. Um, Which is that? I don't mind that name at all. I mean, I mean hey, you know, and it'd you still be your know. own special, unique little flower of a child. I'd be like, "Fuck you, I'm Madison." Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I'm scared of it. Honestly, sure. I don't um, even know what it, the process is. I know you they... have to like give yourself injections in the stomach every day mm-hmm. for like mm-hmm. two weeks, and like stabbing myself with a needle every day feels crazy. Sure. Um, but here's the thing. I think it's really interesting that women can take a hold of, or people, I should say, can take a hold of science right now mm-hmm. and make their own decisions. And so I'm just trying to focus on the fun sciencey part of it mm-hmm. and not get in my own head about like growing little things in my stomach or in my uterus. Mm. And, um, you know, I think it is it's not a sure thing. I think that's like the hard thing about it is they're like, yeah. we don't really know, but- I think it's it's taking a little assurance towards my future. Absolutely. Um, it's very expensive and it's a privilege to even be able to do it. And it changes um, your hormones, right? Like it's going to do, it, does it affect yeah, you like that or is it not? Just for like three weeks. Okay. You just are like, it makes you grow more eggs or something. I actually don't really, like obviously <laughs> like, I'm going to Google this real quick. I need, uh, get, 
can we film the rest of this later? <laughs> let, yeah, let me circle back on that. And yeah, you but anyway, it's it's like they they're doing stuff to basically like get your eggs. They put them on ice. Some of them survive. Some of them don't. Hmm. It's a very strange process, and I'm actually like not really looking forward to it at all. Scary. Um, yeah, That's exciting. I mean, it's it's just like it's not the most. You should pleasant talk to my thing. if you ever want to talk to my sister. This just kind of clicked. She actually was re- she was really high up in marketing. And she did um, like all these ad campaigns. She was a graphic designer. And then she was like, I don't like this. Had a kid, left, became, now she's a personal trainer. So she, wow. there's like, she went into business for herself. Um, I'll tell her to start following you. Cause she, this, she's like really interested in like branding and every, all lots of, there's lots of overlap, but she did all of that with the baby and like, the eggs and the freezing and all that. She is. So like, this, I haven't heard that many people on the other end of the process, like that have like done it. It's and, really like, hard. It yeah. was really hard and there's a lot of, I mean, I can I just, I know there was a lot of disappointment and it, all, but yeah. also it all worked out. So it all, yeah. you know, it was a lot of, she was coming to New York to do it. And I know it was like frustrating and scary and weird. And I know when you, but you know what it was? She said that the doctor they had made such a difference. They had saw this mm, doctor that she yeah. just really trusted and liked. But I mean, isn't that everything? Like any experience led by like someone good totally like, totally i can even relate this actually to comedy like mm. and i'm not gonna name names but if the host is bad like the person taking you on the journey it can like fuck everything Get the up out of here oh this and if you're hosting like, and you have a bad teacher set? Mm. oh yeah i mean but mm. but like it's like the bad teacher the bad doctor or like the good teacher the good doctor the good host the good you know leader can make all the difference um, amen. amen so i'm hoping i'm hoping that it all works out but you know maybe the then uh, we'll talk and I'll, I'll be on the other end of it. I, so I relate to, I'm guessing your boyfriend, is he type A or is, are you the type A in the relationship? Um, I'm the very type A. He's like very relaxed. Okay. So I'm not, I'm only not relaxed. I mean, I'm type A maybe about career stuff, but other than that, I could be, couldn't be less type A in every sense of it. You're relaxed. Totally. And I, my, one of my best friends, Julie is definitely type A. My sister's type A. Uh, I get along very well with type A people. I've even been had friends or been people who have OCD and that mm. I compliment that well. Cause like, if they're like, this needs to be here. If I was also OCD, I'd be like, it needs to be here. But I'm like, I don't give a fuck. What the fucking fuck? Right. Do you usually find yourself dating other people that are not type A? Yeah, I date like musicians and artists. It sucks. I mean, I love it, but right. like, it's such a learning curve. You sure. know, it's such a learning curve to like, <sighs> like get to know someone that's like just so different than you and operates in such a different How way. How can I argue with someone like you? Cause like I never stand a fucking chance in arguments because within one loop of it, I don't understand what's going on anymore because they remember and use specific things. And it's like fucking Jesus I have a Christ. catalog. I have a catalog yeah. of so everything I and I that? can like, look, okay, we have cameras in our house. So do we some- actually set up fucking cameras everywhere. <laughs> okay. There's cameras. I think Ashley and I are the same. Let me tell you something. We have, when we first started dating, she had this, this apartment in, um, in Hollywood and she had all these cameras and I go, she, her apartment had been broken into. So yes. I understand having cameras set up near the door, but I remember I was doing therapy and I look up and there's a fucking camera. Yeah. Facing We're, I'm looking at one I, right now. And I go, Hey, and then I text her, go, Ashley, uh, th- w- what's up with all the cameras? Like they're facing the desk, they're facing the bed. And she's like, oh, I just have that. When the person broke in, I make sure. And she rents out a house in um, Louisiana, an Airbnb. She has all these cameras set up and she'll just be watching it. And I call it Ashley cam. Cause I'm like, <laughs> why you can't, I mean, I don't want to, I'm like, the, you're, and she's watching it. Like it's legal. She lets them know first, but I'm like, it's all for the, in the Airbnb there is all outside. So she'll be like, someone's smoking on my porch. Oh, there's more than one yep. people. They have a dog. But, but, but. What's oh, going yeah. Why? Why cameras? Me, well, I it's did insane. get broken into, but also the elevator opens up into my apartment. And, okay, um, that's awesome. There was like a malfunction one day and then it just kept opening. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm getting cameras. <laughs> Plus, I like that's to look at reason. my dog. I also like to look at my dog when right. I'm gone and be like, what's he doing? Is he thinking about that. me? I get that. Um, I get that. But I do have them everywhere and I do have them in the bedroom and the kitchen and the living room. So, literally everywhere. So, yes. Like I have accidentally made a lot of sex tapes, right. but I will say during an argument, sometimes I'm like say, cause, cause I think you like my boyfriend. Do you boyfriend, think, of, maybe do you think you're like, you, have you ever thought of referring to the up, camera? <laughs> I, I'm, 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 you pull up I'm footage. Like, <laughs> no, I literally say, let's review the footage. 
I would he, shoot myself. And he goes, he's like, no, because he knows. Okay. He knows that my story will be in line with the footage because he likes to give his own interpretation about the, 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 the facts of the case. Right. And I know that I catalog everything in my brain, so it couldn't possibly be wrong. I also hate being wrong. But and what if, what if the facts yes. of the case, it's like, okay, there's the facts of the case, and then sure. there's the feelings of the case. Yes. So maybe it's like, okay, yeah, these are the facts, but I felt this, and then maybe I also got confused about this, and also, <laughs> yes, maybe I did, don't know why or I put the Swiffer for the 900th time, and maybe I did say something and I forgot it. But also the intention, you know, so there's the facts and the yes. feelings. I think be a feelings um, the intentions thing is where I get a little lost because I then go into, I'm not a mind reader. You <sighs> should use your communication skills better. Because like the thing is, is like, it, it, like often we literally had very fair. last night. Like if this, <laughs> if I wasn't putting myself in his position and it was just me, I'd be like, that is, that is makes sense. And that's fair. And that's accurate. Me putting myself in his position, pretending I'm hearing my girlfriend say that, makes me go, fucking fuck. But right. friend Emma is like, you're right. And that's true. And that's well said. Emma, girlfriend you know Emma what? is like, fuck. But I do think a good part of a relationship is under, like, um, what, I've, what I've tried to do, and I'm not perfect at it by any means. Like, actually, I'm really bad at it. But I, what I'm trying to work on, something I'm just working on personally, is trying to, at the end of it because I don't like the whole mind reading thing. And I, you know, I'm more of a, like be a direct communicator, but right. I'm trying to infuse a little bit more of, okay, but this is a person I really love and mm -hmm. I know their general intentions are good. <laughs> exactly. Also, they forget that they don't say some things that they think. It's in their head and they think they said it, but they didn't actually say it. And so, yes, I understand that you think you said that. <laughs> you didn't. So we're not gonna argue about the fact that you didn't say it. Right. I will say, okay, um, if you would have just communicated that, I would understand that a little better, but I do understand that that was your intention. Do you ever admit you're wrong after a fight? Um, almost never. I don't know if I've ever had a girlfriend ever ever admit they're wrong that I can even unless it was like <laughs> unless I had hammered on it so much which I wouldn't even which I would be scared to do I mean that would be I can't I really can't think of a case I mean I'd have to be like I think I'd be beat I'd have to beat them down which then I'd be so scared and then I'd be so beaten down I'd be like <laughs> so were you wrong and then maybe they'd be like yeah but <laughs> I mean I can't even think of a scenario I, where that has been yeah I think it's hard to say. I, you know what? Here's the thing. I put so much thought into everything I do, mm, and I'm like and so overly analytical. Right. I don't kind of missteps or miscommunication because my thing is actually the worst problem, which is like over communication, overthinking. Mm. So I relate to that too, I am though. Never like, oh, I fucked up. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's that's anxiety. I think it's I over communicate like sometimes. Health. Maybe not in relationships, but I'll do that. But then I still fuck but up. I, I'm a big, I'm a big prefacer. Like hmm. before I say this, I want you to know that I'm saying this with like a lot of respect. And a yes. lot of you know, it's a lot of that. That's helpful. Um, but also like, hey, I understand these fears might come up for you as I hmm. say this thing. Just like having an awareness. Um, also, I think like 10 steps ahead. So I already know like the oh he's screwed if he's gonna oh, yeah. Her. yeah yeah it's not well, even. and 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 he always is like oh i hate arguing with you because <laughs> i don't think as fast as you yes like, I can't process it this fast i can't come up with what i'm supposed to say so then you're talking a mile a minute and he's like i'll figure out what i want to say in three days from now totally <laughs> it's like, literally because all am of a sudden I, am i dating you <laughs> it's literally all of a sudden i'm like you just said so many things like very poignantly and well and now i forgot what i was even thinking and then now i'm confused and then yeah. it's like well okay because you were wrong and it's like no i just now i forgot what the fuck it was even like supposed to it's very and then i wonder if he says this i'll be like i, I don't know if i'll even articulate this but or, no i definitely have i'll be like well i, I hate arguing with you i feel stupid yeah. And then it's like, well, why? You shouldn't feel stupid. I'm just saying this and that. And, you, and then she'll be like, and you're not stupid. And, and I'm like, yeah, but when we argue, I can remember like three to five things max. 
And right. other than that, I mean, I no, I can remember one to two things, Max, in an argument. And then I just start going, you're right, you're right, you're right, which women do not like. Because right. I feel like it's a blow you know that you're actually not, you don't actually think we're right. You just I say I'm done. So- I go, I'm sorry. You know what? You're right. And sometimes I'll be like, fine, you're right. Like, but I'll be, that's really passive aggressive. I'll be like, I'm sorry. Like, you're right. Well, I think like women also can sniff out when the apology is like, just you trying, <sighs> you're just tired. It's fucking brutal. You yeah. should just say I'm tired rather than I'm sorry. Cause like, that's yeah. actually much more accurate of what's that's, happening. I you're actually not happen. sorry, but you're just, you're, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm done. I wonder if I said that. I feel like if I was like, you know, I'm done. She'd be like, oh, it must be nice. Like you were also wrong though. So you, right. can, we, we haven't worked it out yet. Like if you're the culprit and then you say you're done when someone highlights what you did wrong. You know what um, we learned in couples therapy, which was very helpful because I would always get frustrated because he'd be like, I need a break. And I'm like, well, when do we pick this back up? Because I know you're never going to want to start this conversation. <laughs> you're you're never going to be like, hey, about that thing that we were fighting about, right, we should right. really talk about that. Like, Look I'm like, yeah, we'll both be dead before you talk about this shit again. Like, we'll literally just move on with our lives. <laughs> right. Never to talk to each other again. <laughs> but he was, but I sometimes need a break when we're fighting sure. because I need time to gather my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, why can't you just gather them? Like I gather them fast. <laughs> and he was like, I'm not made like that. And so in couples therapy, our couples therapist said that it's really great to understand that one person might need a break, but then the condition of it is you have to set a time mm. when you are going to talk about it again. Reconvene. So like, That's Hey, fair. um, it's, it's, it's 10 30 right now. Um, we're both exhausted. We've both been fighting for two hours. It's not going anywhere, <laughs> but how about tomorrow morning when we, we wake up, we can talk about it again, but like setting the time for when you want right. to talk again makes the other person like me, the like type a Feel assured. To, yes. They're like, okay, I can give you that because I have a plan. Right. Um, plus it gives us so much other time to just gather our evidence. I was just going to say, <laughs> you're going to show up to that meeting with a fucking agenda Finder. and a PowerPoint and footage <laughs> from the film. And you're like, did you gather your thoughts? Cause I've been gathering mine. But- yeah. It's not actually probably, <laughs> probably a good idea for them. <laughs> it's good to, if you want to say you want to gather your thoughts, it's totally fine. But it's basically calling the bluff and saying, okay, so gather your thoughts then. That's kind of how yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. But also, like, you actually have to gather them. You, have you just can't go, thoughts. like, smoke weed on the balcony. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, thank you. This has been so informative. I really appreciate so it. Where can people find you online and follow all your stuff and check out your podcast? Yeah, um, uh, you can follow me online at Shanae Alexander on all the things. It's C-H-I-N-A-E Alexander. And then Press Send Podcast is my podcast. It's an advice show. Start with Emma's episode. You have to come back on. I'd we love need to do was a that full- about- was it a year ago? When, when, yeah. when did we do that? Yeah. Wow. It was probably Isn't a year crazy? ago. Yeah, because crazy. I had contacted you right after I saw you. So you've got to come back on and do a little Love update to. episode. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. So good chatting. Yes, I'll say this.